<laughs> something cool true. that I that I've realized about this unfortunate corona circumstance is that like for me I've been able to get more into like my own musical self and like broaden my horizons a little bit um mm -hmm. just because I wasn't so much of a recorder except for mm -hmm. when absolutely necessary you know I wouldn't mix mm -hmm. and do stuff mm -hmm. myself but because of this there's been a lot of people saying hey can can you record this? Can you do this? We're trying to put together a track. We're trying to put together something to help yeah. other people out uh, in this situation. Has there been anything like that to the, that's gone on with you recently because of it? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, a, a, there's a lot of collaborations actually with um, LA musicians or video game musicians who are doing some kinds of collaborations that would have never taken part mm -hmm. if we would have just carried on with our busy lives. So um, I really relate to what you're saying. And it's, it's kind of beautiful to see this kind of support mm -hmm. between each other. And I feel this support is much more, is that word feelable? <laughs> is that an English mm -hmm. word? Like yeah. you, you can really feel, <laughs> you can really feel that kind of support. I feel, oh, yeah. I feel, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's um, really special. Um, and actually now, um, because I, I actually thought I would have a lot of time on my hand right now, <laughs> to just um, to, so I um, began upgrading my studio equipment and stuff like that, oh, because great. I feel now is the perfect time actually to work um, on your business as oh, opposed yeah. to just for your business and just to mm -hmm. carry on. So um, I think that's a beautiful opportunity, as you said, to expand your horizons, um, be that musically or business wise. But actually then um, I realized that the video game industry is still working. So mm -hmm. um, I um, actually got a few requests to record on video games now and nice. also on soundtracks and albums. So they're coming back in <laughs> and I'm really grateful for that. But I really relate to what you're saying. Um, it's, it's like music has some different kind of angles or perspectives now um, mm -hmm. with Corona. And it's not always bad. It can be as you said, you, we can feel a beautiful sense of support. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was just going to ask, you know, you just talked about how uh, this is a great time to kind of upgrade your business or, or work on the <laughs> business side of things as opposed to the performance side of things. Um, what kind of th things did you do to market yourself when you were first kind of starting out in this path, particularly, let's say, after you got your first experience with video game music from there what did you what did you do to kind of get your name even further out there in that industry yeah and to be perfectly honest it was just kind of accidental okay. <laughs> because i just focused on the passion for the music and mm -hmm. at the same time um i i don't really like the term um personally i don't really like the term marketing mm -hmm. um for me it's more like well i think everyone's different but for me it's about sharing and posting on social media a lot as well mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just what i like doing so i really um, personally enjoy that and i really think um no matter which marketing approach or how you would call it or networking approach you would take um, it's always so important that it's kind of genuine and coming from the bottom of your heart if you can say it like mm -hmm. that and yeah. um, so for example if someone just doesn't like to post on social media then um it's it's totally fine then just connect with people personally mm -hmm. um try to maybe um have a meeting with another composer or a director mm -hmm. um but yes yeah, so uh, back then in um 2014 when i sang my first video game it was a uh, Total War Attila, actually, mm -hmm. it was the Celts culture pack trailer and a theme. So I sang some kind of Celtic vocals uh, with amazing composer Ian Livingstone. Um, he's awesome. And um, so then, um, actually, um, a few days after, Joris Deman from Horizon Zero Dawn approached me because he knew Ian. And so they were ta just talking to each other, and Joris asked, asked him if he knew of a voice that sounded a bit more breathy a bit more um how would you call it um, i don't know like um that stands out in some mm -hmm. way that uh, sounds a bit different um so um he um, recommended me and that was how i got on horizon zero dawn and it was actually funny because joris just wrote an email like yo <laughs> can, can you sing on my score <laughs> like <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> wow. and i was like okay, tomorrow should work. <laughs> so, that we, we so this is how the theme um, kind of came about. <laughs> and um, awesome. yeah, but, but I've never really been marketing myself consciously, um, mm -hmm. but it's more about 
sharing what you're passionate about. Um, and for yeah. me, that's on social media because I'm here in Germany and mm -hmm. social media is my portal to the world kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm just here doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I just try to share what inspires me or what I find funny and wh what I'm doing. Um, so that was my, so it, it was more accidental marketing rather than a strategy. And sure. Yeah. So I think there's something to be said about being genuine. I think people, people can tell when you're being honest about uh, your passion and, and uh, yeah, exactly. you know, the, your willingness to do these sorts of projects. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I think it's so true what Tina Guo, uh, she's an amazing cellist and mm -hmm. she's um, played on so many um, video game and film scores. And she always talks about the dangling carrot method for marketing. And I think it's really insanely good because it means that you are just this shiny carrot <laughs> and you try to make your carrot as shiny as possible and there are rabbits around and they are the composers or maybe in your case like the directors of different mm -hmm. films and if they just see as you said what you're passionate about if you just show that whatever mm -hmm. it is and um, they will notice at one point and it's mm -hmm. i think it's much more effective than just shoving your your music or your work <laughs> into people's faces being like can you give me some work it's, mm -hmm. it's better to just be a shiny carrot and try to make your carrot as shiny as possible <laughs> and even to take that like a level further i think beyond even just the people that are like experiencing or seeing your music or whatever art you're putting out i think especially for those people that you collaborate with mm. you you create such better bonds and like friendships out of yes. out of those experiences which is just always great to have Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so, so much. So a bit of a tangent from that, now that you're doing all these projects that aren't what a lot of people would consider classical music, do you yeah. find yourself <laughs> going back to any techniques that you learned in your classical training getting to this point? Absolutely. Um, especially now, um, it's just a point where I realized that I really have to get back into my vocal training <laughs> because um, in the midst of doing everything, like um, recording on so many soundtracks, I sometimes just forgot to do um, the voice training beforehand. So you just get so caught up in your work. Um, mm -hmm. But but now um, actually I, I took a step back and um, now I'm actually doing all these things that I learned in maybe choir um, studies oh. Oh, yeah. or um, in, in um, how do you call it in English? It's like, yeah, voice training in a group mm -hmm. of people <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. at school maybe or mm -hmm. something like that. So it, it's really helpful to regain that kind of technical foundation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important and I'm re-realizing re that right now. So um, yes, absolutely. And I think even for you guys, um, y you might end up somewhere in jazz music, maybe, or mm -hmm. I don't know, or video games course or somewhere, but it's always good to have this kind of foundation and to never forget about it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's a lifelong lesson. You just keep coming back to, oh, I have to practice my technique. <laughs> right. I can't just jump to the microphone and be yeah. like metal vocals yeah <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> Start the computer. Mm -hmm. so what are some like an experience where you were like wow i just did not see this coming aside from obviously just <laughs> just thing. ending up in <laughs> but, like the whole thing but yeah <laughs> but like after after kind of being in the industry for a while now and especially in, in a spot where like it's still kind of, I would say kind of beginning, but you came in on a lot of the forefront of like where people are looking and asking for people and finding you through like YouTube and stuff. Yeah. What are some experiences that you just were like, wow, never would have expected this? Well, um, I honestly have to say almost all of this because actually ever after each soundtrack I sing on, I never kind of expect that it's, um, that it's staying this way on this level <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just like i'm i'm getting prepared that it was that that like that's my career <laughs> it's done now so so i'm kind of mentally prepared for that but at the same time and um, then i'm really grateful if another um work come if another um collaboration comes in mm -hmm. so 
um, I think it's always good to stay humble and grateful about um, what you're doing. And at the same time, so much of all of this has been so surprising. Mm -hmm. And I think the most surprising moment was actually singing for um, James Newton Howard and um, receiving this email um, because um, he was searching for a vocalist or uh, rather several vocalists for his European tour in 2017. Mm -hmm. So um, I was auditioning and we could all send in audition videos um, of the Hanging Tree song. You, mm -hmm. I, I think you you know it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so many, like thousands of audition entries were there and I didn't really expect anything. And mm -hmm. then one day, uh, because I love nature, I love being out in nature. So mm -hmm. it was kind of, October and it was already starting to snow here in Germany mm -hmm. <laughs> for some reason and I was out in the forest and I had my phone with me and I was just happily hiking through the forest through the snow and then suddenly I got this message from um, his team like that I was the singer for his Vienna concert and I was just screaming in the forest <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and then people would be like okay <laughs> and I, I went back all the all the hiking trail just with this biggest grin on my face and mm -hmm. I think people would think I'm a bit creepy in a way like <laughs> I'm just, just going along through the woods and with this smile on my face but that was the most um, surprising moment actually and then to be perfectly honest singing for him on stage I was so emotional <laughs> that I didn't I, the, the performance was not my best like it was not like the best I've ever done. Yeah. I was just so emotional and my voice was cracking a bit because it, it felt so emotional. Mm -hmm. um, but I got much more experience in singing on stage and with orchestras afterwards, so it oh, got yeah. better. But um, just to to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, getting emotional on stage is a really uh, difficult challenge for live performance. Oh, yeah. What, what other challenges have you had to face uh, going through this career of video game music? Um, so challenges, um, of course, navigating the business side, because as, as you, as I um, mentioned, I was kind of um, accidentally um, mm -hmm. <laughs> starting to be a soundtrack and video game singer. So I had to learn the business aspects really quick. Uh, really quickly so that was of course a challenge um, and when I actually recorded on Horizon Zero Dawn on the score um, we recorded the cutscenes in a very short amount of time mm -hmm. and it was I think the end of 2016 um, and I had really tight deadline pressure Lewis and the rest of the team as well mm -hmm. and I developed some kind of vocal cord issues mm -hmm. um, so that was really um, nerve-wracking at the time for me because I was just there trying to sing on all these tracks I think it was 22 different tracks and I was just trying to record them all in maybe a week or two or what it was oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was I really had to keep Ooh, going yeah. but then I had these voice problems but then again as you said beforehand um, about uh, the corona situation bringing everyone together and that it's kind of a beautiful aspect to this shitty situation mm -hmm. um, it was kind of similar there because all the team just um, uh, supported me so much through the process and I had three days of vocal rest and then I could sing the rest and um, of course after that I needed some kind of voice therapy but um, I think that's something that can happen to any singer at any point. Um, of course when you do your vocal training <laughs> diligently <laughs> it won't happen as much I think but that was a really difficult uh, point um, oh, yeah. But we went through it and it all worked out and I'm still so grateful to the whole team um, that they supported me in that and didn't put much uh, more pressure on me, mm -hmm. but that uh, I could have a vocal rest for two or three days and then continue. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, I felt like now I can do anything, <laughs> you know, <laughs> now, now, now nothing can really happen anymore that's more um, nerve wracking than this. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of um, these experience I feel give us a different kind of strength that we didn't yeah. know. Oh yeah. So yeah. It's, it's very freeing when you go through a really tough experience and come out the other side really happy with the final product or the final result. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then we come back to the point where people are like, oh, that sounds so peaceful and angelic. <laughs> 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 you remember like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
That was a terrible week. <laughs> no, that's not terrible. Musically inspired, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. what is some closing advice you'd have for students that are about getting ready to graduate college and they're going to start navigating their careers, possibly wanting to get into the industry like you are? Yeah, um, so actually I can of course only speak from my perspective, but um, actually I found it really helpful to have a side job at first. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's kind of a controversial topic. Some musicians are saying like, oh no, you should only be a musician, then you're only a real musician. But actually um, I found it really helpful because it gave me some kind of financial confidence and relaxation. Um, especially in the first years because you don't um, get to work on um, films or projects so regularly at first. Um, so um, that is something that I always considered an asset rather than, oh, I have to do this kind of side job. Mm -hmm. So I, I can only recommend that um, because then you can be really free in the projects you take on as well. So you can really um, choose the projects rather than just being desperate. So you oh, can yeah. actually be a more shiny carrot. <laughs> because you, yeah, um, so that's, but that's just my philosophy. And otherwise just um, what we said beforehand, just when you are genuinely passionate about something and share it with the world from a point of overflow and inspiration rather than desperation, and um, it will be noticed by someone and it will be mm -hmm. heard. And I think that's just the most important thing you can do. And that looks so different for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was oh, yeah, a thanks. pleasure to talk to you. And of course, thank you, thank you to the awesome co-host who joined me today. Yes, you guys are amazing. <laughs> it was lovely to talk to you. <laughs> it was awesome talking with you. Yeah, thank you so much.